Welcome to today's uh, Friday Fundamental on designing of a kitchen. And what I want to do over the course of the next hour is um, take you through kind of the concepts that you um, and the tools that you would use in order to create as close as we can get to a kitchen design inside of one hour. The project that we're going to be um, doing is in essence a uh, remodel design that will take a, an existing kitchen um, that was uh, fairly close and cramped if you will and make use of um, the space within the house that was available to us to design a larger more gourmet style kitchen uh, that was better for entertaining. Um, what you actually see on the drawing screen right now in front of you is a soft plan rendering of that, um, what that finished project was going to look like. And so um, with that in mind, I'll actually bring up in front the actual finished project. And as you can see, um, the rendering versus the finished project, uh, they really um, look fairly similar as far as the uh, what the design was you know concerned and it made it very easy then to make a a saleable um, you know uh, project to the homeowner and so um, with this in mind I'm going to just drag these off the drawing screen and uh, let you focus in on uh, what the actual existing design looked like and so basically we have a, a standard um, kind of colonial style house. Uh, this was the kitchen that you can see here in plan view. And then um, there was a kitchen uh, eating area off to the right, a family room. And to the left, the space that we were going to basically annex into the kitchen was um, a dining room, which the homeowners had basically decided or determined at this stage um, was space that could be better used. Um, uh, certainly there's the argument whether dining rooms have a place anymore and um, those that, that tend to use them will argue for them. But in this case, uh, this room here was seldom used. And so the, the, um, the basic concept was if this wall were removed and these kitchens were basic or these cabinets were, were gutted out, uh, what kind of a design could we come up with as far as for the gourmet uh, kitchen they were looking for? If I take you into the uh, 3D shaded and uh, mode at this stage, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here um, uh, through the options and material and actually turn off the ceiling so that we can actually look down on this. What you will see at this stage is, um, and I'll just zoom this up a little bit, okay? Uh, without the ceiling in place, it makes it a little easier to see. So we've got a, a kitchen at this stage, and we've got a wall that ran through here and a dining room on the other side. And so uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to remove that out, and you can see um, how much square footage we're going to get back, uh, you know, to be able to design with. So coming into the main floor plan, um, this is the existing drawing. And so I'm going to make use actually at this stage of a use of building options. And what the building options will do is uh, they are like enhanced uh, layers, if you will. And, and I, I say that because of the fact that within soft plan, a layer is simply a two dimensional. Do I want to see it? Yes or no. And the building option actually not only impacts whether you're going to see it on the floor plan view, but also into the elevations, the 3D models, and the bill materials. When that item is on or off, it also is a toggle for whether or not you will calculate it in the bill materials or whether you will see it in 3D, et cetera. And so I'm basically going to come in through model and um, under the, the model, I'll select building options. And this would allow me to now come in and modify this as, let's just say, demo. OK, and I'm going to, right now it is currently set to visible. And, um, you know, depending on what I want to do, I could even go in and, and fade the items that are assigned to this. Or in my case, I'll eventually just, you know, completely take them out. But the, the use of this now is I could come in through edit, edit item. And if I select this item, I can come in now through the common tab. And you'll see right now it's defined to a building option of default. And so in this case, I will assign it to demo and um, you know, it's now assigned to a different option. And so using the repeat edit box, I could then come in and what you can see at this stage is I'm just basically everything that was highlighted in yellow has now been assigned to that default building option. So here's what happens is inside the uh, listing of options, if I turn demo off, 
it now removes those options not only from the floor plan but also in the 3D model. And so at this stage now you can see I have this large wide open space that I, I'm, I'm working with. And once again, if I come back in and turn this building option on, it's now going to recalculate and show me that in there. I show you building options because it's it's um, something I use for a demo you know, feature right now. But in the future, you might use it if you have multiple configurations of a kitchen or a master bath or roof lines that you want to show, whereby you could say this building option will be assigned to, um, uh, you know, hip roofs or this one to gable roofs and, and so on. OK, and so um, inside the floor plan, again, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to turn those options off. OK, so they're no longer displayed and I'll be drawing inside the building option. OK, and so. With that taken out, basically what we wanted to do is create more storage space. We just gained all of this room back here now that we can go ahead and work with. And so we're going to begin to do the, the design itself and then working from there. And you'll be seeing me drawing in multiple different places over the course of the next um, hour or so. At times I'll be drawing in floor plan mode. Other times I will draw in 3D and there will even be times I draw in elevation. And my goal is to show you as many tools as possible in 60 minutes to get a design concept pulled together. OK, um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, basically knowing that I, I, there was going to be a bank of cabinets that would run across the back here. If I pull the the uh, finished kitchen up, what you will see here when you're taking a look at it is we will be creating some sort of a double oven situation here, a refrigerator with cabinets. Uh, this became a coffee bar, if you will, and then some pantry cabinets over here. So this will, these over here will involve custom cabinet, you know, creation as well as something that we can do. And so uh, zooming this up here and making sure I'm drawing in the default building option or, you know, uh, something that I want to see, I can come in through draw and I can select cabinet. Now Softland ships with a series of you know individual generic base cabinets and it also ships with manufacturer cabinets. And so in this case here I can come in through the, the various cabinets that are available and you can see I've got my base, I've got my tall cabinets, etc. And as I scroll through these, depending on the manufacturer that I want to use, I'll be able to go in and select from any one of these and get the preview of what this is going to look like. And so as you can see, uh, you know, the oven cabinets, I'm just pulling this up and I can take a look at what it is I want as far as size is concerned. So I've got my oven cabinet. Do I want a, you know, 30 inch, uh, you know, wide cabinet by 96 inches in height and so on. Okay. That's a single oven. Or do I want to find something that's more in line with a double oven? And you can certainly go through, you know, and select those, you know, those settings there. So this is, entirely up to you. You just simply make the selection for what it is that you're looking for. Once you have selected the, the uh, cabinet, it draws very much like a symbol. So it's just simply click to start, pull the cursor towards the, the direction the cabinet is to view and click. And as I look at this inside 3D, I'll click the zoom to uh, surface and it's going to pull this cabinet up for me like so. All right. And so now I can just simply continue to go ahead and either modify this or I can, you know, add to, um, you know, the, the, the various uh, cabinets that are that are there. Uh, in this case here, I could even modify what the height of this is going to be. Uh, and so in this case, actually, that was um, I want to go into the uh, face of the cabinet or the tall cabinet itself, remove the product code and now I'll be able to change what the actual individual height is and set it to 96 inches. And it stretches this cabinet up like so. And so now with this cabinet in place, I can continue to place other cabinets along the way. And so I'll go back into the cabinet option. And in this case, I may select, let's say, the tall cabinet. And what I'm really looking to do is just I want to build um, kind of a, a uh, refrigerator style, you know, symbol and so on that's going to go in there. And so I'm just going to, um, you know, change this and, and place a filler in there. OK, so when I select the filler in there, I can change the width of this. And so, uh, you know, whatever that thickness is going to be, I can actually change what the individual height is going to be. And then once again, just, you know, click to start. And I'm actually going to change the depth on this as well so that it matches what my other cabinet is. And so with the preview, I saw it there and click to have it draw. And you're going to see the two cabinets snap to one another like so. 
And so basically, again, just kind of previewing back and forth, we can see exactly what we've got here. Now, this is going to be a place where I'll probably begin to now, you know, place in uh, symbols and so on. Softland ships with thousands of symbols, and so um, you can go into the the uh, you know the, the kitchen library and you can find you know generic symbols, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with you know selecting the you know let's say the double oven right here, and I could place that in. But we also ship with manufacturers, and and you know as well as I do what sips sets um, a high end rendering apart from a you know just kind of a generic rendering, or allows the animation and the the homeowner to truly feel what something's going to look like is if you begin to use the manufacturer's product codes and they're all too happy to provide them for you. Softland does ship with um, hundreds if not thousands of manufacturer symbols in there already and so you can certainly come into the manufacturer symbols and then from here you can begin to you know select uh, from their list of symbols that are available okay and you can depending on what it is that you're looking for you know this is you know specifically to in this case to General Electric their 30 inch you know electric double wall oven etc and it's it's a literally been created by the manufacturer and then allowed for export into CAD software such as Softland. You can go online and you can find a lot of these, um, you know, as well from the manufacturer themselves. But once I've selected this, I can then you know click where I want this to be placed, and I could you know simply you know draw it into place on the the actual symbol itself. And so now I'm just you know simply moving it into place, and I can see on the product or on the 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 3D over here where it's actually being placed and and this is a case of now where I might you know as I say uh, use the 3d itself to get this exactly where I want it to be and so you know I'm um, just setting that up you know in the elevation or in the 3d to go along with the plan the same thing I'll come back to the symbol library and from here I can scroll down looking for let's say a, you know a refrigerator symbol that I want to use okay and so I could find let's say the French you know door uh, symbol which is very very popular these days right for a lot of our homeowners and so I place that in and again I could just now move this into place if I edit this symbol I will get all of the dimensions that are needed or that I will need for creating the cabinet that will go over top of it. So it's just shy of six feet in height. It's three feet in width, right? And so now when I come in through the cabinet symbol and I select that I want to draw a wall cabinet, all right, I know that I'm picking a 36 inch wide cabinet. I do know that the height of this is going to have to be, uh, you know, or sorry, the offset of this is going to be set at six feet. Okay, and knowing that the individual height needs to be 96 inches, I could then go in and change what the individual height of this is going to be, you know, depending on what it is I want to create, you know, as far as the symbol is concerned. Okay, so um, let's just do something like that. And I will now click to start and click to finish. Now when it places the symbol in, I see it there. By default, I forgot to change it, uh, if you will, or set myself up so I could show you an edit in 3D. So I could then edit this specific symbol, and what you'll see is the wall cabinet itself. Of course, I didn't change the depth. And so now I could come in here and modify that on the fly to be 24 inches. And so you can see how you know I'm beginning to build this as we go. Um, <clears throat> So if I come in through miscellaneous and explode and I click this symbol, I'll see the individual symbols being broken down into, into pieces. And the main reason I did that is I simply want to come in and draw the same fill symbol. Okay, so using draw select, I could actually pick that symbol and now draw another one over here on this side. And I'm just going to move a few things into place so that I get kind of a filler on either side for said symbol and then and I, when I come back into the 3D, I can see what I've got, okay? And so I placed a filler on either side for that, you know, basically just slide in, you know, and that's just kind of setting these up, you know, as we go. So continuing on then from here, um, you know, just to, to draw a few more symbols, uh, you know, as, as it may be, I'm going to come in through um, – 
uh, options, or excuse me, model, and I'm going to go to interior elevation. And I'm going to position my cursor here and click moving towards or looking towards the, the wall line that we have been drawing with. And you will see under the navigation menu under interior elevations, it actually pulls up my views and it's labeled as view number one. And this shows me what my elevation now looks like. Now I'm currently in shaded mode. I mean, I can change to any mode I want, you know, as far as, you know, this is concerned. And so right Right now I've just changed into visible line because I'm more concerned about shapes and so on. From here, I could actually select draw and cabinet, and I can begin to actually draw base cabinets in here or wall cabinets as well. And this is a really effective way to draw within soft plan. So to begin with, I'm going to select a 36 inch cabinet, and I'm going to change the front of this, and I actually want zero drawers, and I'm looking or doors and select three drawers. And I'm even going to go ahead and change this and recess them so that I see what they look like. And so now you can see I'm just basically you know moving where I want my cabinet you know to be placed and I'll click and it places that in there now this cabinet if I wanted I could come in and even adjust it so if you're just playing with shapes you can see I can actually adjust this to where I want it to be and then for accuracy I can actually edit this base cabinet and change it to exactly the width that I want if there was something specific. You know, uh, I place originally 36 if I want a 42 inch wide cabinet in there and then do like so. As I come back into the main floor plan and just run a um, cleanup and, you know, I'll, I will see that at this stage I'm just going to move this, you know, because of where I, what I was doing with the moving inside 3D. Um, there's my cabinet here, and it's actually snapped to the uh, to the, the to the wall cabinet, and so we've got something like so. I'm just moving this ever so slightly, and what I want to do is every time I move the one cabinet, it's actually moving the other. So I'm going to turn the attach feature off. And what Softline does with the attach feature is when it when it assumes that two things are actually attached, as you move one, it's going to move the other with it. Um, this is extremely helpful if you're trying to move a symbol with a wall. But in this case, it continued to move two cabinets. I was attempting to, uh, to align to one another. I wanted the edge to here. And so it was moving the upper wall cabinet with. So I just simply turned the attach feature off, which allows allowed me to move this symbol individually. Okay, selecting dimension and uh, dimension at this stage, and I'm just going to turn symbol dimension on. I just want a dimension between these two symbols to see kind of what I have to work with as far as the, um, you know, the, the, what the measurement is that we've got on there. And so I can see at this stage, you know, I've got myself you know, 68 inches, right? And so I want to basically create a custom, you know, uh, cabinet or pantry cabinets that are going to go in here that are, you know, either custom in the sense of exactly, let's say, 34 inches wide or, you know, one that's going to be 36, one that's going to be 32 or, or something along that lines. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create actually a custom cabinet for you just so that you can see what this is going to look like. And so because if I were to come in here and I were to select, let's say, uh, draw a cabinet and place a tall cabinet in here, Right. So I've got my and again, I could, you know, specify exactly what that custom width is going to be. And I could change its depth to be 24 inches and its height's going to be 96 inches and all of that information. But basically, as I place this cabinet in and I look at it, really all I get is kind of a, a tall, you know, two door type style cabinet is going to be on there. And so what I'd like to do is actually continue the drawers across and then I will modify, you know, what the. Um, you know, where the, what the drawers are going to look like and, and where the doors are going to be. And so what I will do is inside the floor plan, I'm going to zoom this up and just right click and do an edit on this. And right now we're, we're working from a, a, you know, show name. I, I've customized the, the product code, et cetera. So I'd like to come in here and modify what the face is going to, to look like on this. Okay. And so in, in, in this case right here, um, I'm going to do a custom face on it and this will allow me to come in and now build the pieces of what this is going to, to look like. And so if I start by, let's just say I'm going to add a, a part to this, I'm going to click on drawer and select OK. Now, um, I want to, I want to get as much customization in as we possibly can in a short period of time. And so what I want to do is I'm going to place a drawer in here and I'm going to say that it's recessed and I'm going to fix that size at, let's say, 12 inches. 
And so now I'll add another part above that and again add a, a secondary drawer as opposed to say double drawers and so on. And again, it adds it on top this time and now I could fix that. And let's say I, I'm gonna change this one to 10 inches. And so, whoops, and so now I'm going to, uh, I need to continue to edit that um, custom face. So I'm not done with it. I'm going to add one more part to it. I'm going to add one, uh, another drawer, fix it, and this time here on the recess, I'll set this to, let's say, 8 inches. And so finally, I'll add a part to it, and this time I'll just place the double doors on top. And this I will have, it, it will just actually scale. So I won't actually fix the size, because that will allow me to now, you know, when I change the height of this, it will stretch the double doors while leaving the drawers fixed. And so at this stage, you can see what I have there. And so as I look at this now in 3D, there's my double drawers. Now these are different, because this one here was a custom drawer, so they're different sizes. So I would need to come in and edit this and I would need to come in and custom face this as well and this is where I could come in now and do 12, 10, and 8 on this if I wanted it to align with this one over here right and so that's just customizing as we go and so now what I could do uh, guys is I could just come in through draw select and pick this and we'll add another one right here and so now very quickly we've customized our cabinets and we set this up all the way across okay and so that's you know that just kind of gets us again looking at it from an elevation perspective we can see it and we can see it from the 3d perspective and now the main floor and so that's a, you know, we, we just did a whole pile of cabinets in there. Um, again, I'm doing a lot of space planning right now as fast as I can. And so let's continue on with this. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is um, basically on the original design there in the, what was the dining room, there was a, a uh, 60 inch double hung style window that was going to be played that was in there that was removed. And uh, we basically we placed an exterior French door in its place, allowing access out to the existing deck that they had, you know, on the back of the house. And so that's what I'm going to do there is just simply, you know, drop this in. Um, of course, it was exactly dimensioned to where we, you know, wanted it to be. But, you know, for the sake of the class, I'm just going to, to drop that in there now. And this will allow me to now go ahead and begin uh, planning the rest of the, the kitchen design that's going to be here. So once again, this is where... Um, I would really recommend that you come in and possibly use these interior elevations because as you um, as you will see and let me interesting oh there's a I know what it is that's going on there um, let me come in and turn this on for a second the the section line is actually stopping at this wall so I'm going to adjust this back for just a moment and I'm going to turn that back off and I'm going to come in here through the section interior section line and just draw that cutting all the way through. And so now what I'll come do into the interior view here and it's going to give me this wall right here. And again, I tend to draw, you know, the visible lines is easier for to, for me to decipher what I'm doing and it draws quickly. So using the draw option in cabinet, let's see, you know, if I can put this together relatively quickly for you to see. And so I'm going to begin, um, you know, on this one with having a single drawer count, single door count, right? As being 24 inches in width. And I'm just going to click to insert something like so. And then I'll come back into the cabinet and base. And this time we're going to change this to, you can just see what I'm doing. I'm just changing this, uh, you know, on the fly you know, to, you know, what this is going to look like. And this one will make it 30 inches. And I'm, I'm really just space planning as we go here. And so, um, you know, placing that in there. And so we've got, you know, two of them. And if I come back into the floor plan, I can begin to see what we've got here. Um, so if I explode this, which is just simply, I'm using a keyboard shortcut of control E, I can edit this quickly and just change this width to let's say 24 inches. And then once again, run what's called a cleanup, which is just control C on the keyboard or hitting a little icon up here. And it, you know, it does that for me. There's going to be a gas range or a cooktop that's going to go in here uh, on top of this. And so for right now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to select the um, symbol because I really kind of want to see what I'm dealing with as far as the symbol is concerned. That's a 48 inch, probably not what we're looking for. Uh, a 36 inch, it's got, you know, multiple burners on it. So that will, you know, kind of give me a dimension of what I want to work with. So I'll come in here through the base cabinet, 
pick a 36 inch and really as far as the the uh it's going to have two doors and eventually we'll have zero drawers uh to sit in in there but we'll just do this for right now and you know click to insert it and so using the draw select i could come in through draw select and pick the 24 inch drawer and the draw select to pick this one and add it in and so in the using the interior elevation we can see how quickly I put those together, um, you know. So, um, you know, just taking a look at this, uh, that, that's laying the cabinets out. Um, so now the next thing that I want to do um, is, uh, you know, zoom in, in, you know, on this here and make some modifications to it. Um, there are questions coming in and I, I see them and I, I will attempt to acknowledge them as throughout the design, um, it, you know, things that deal with window treatments and cabinets and, you know, hardware and so on. So uh, I, I'll do the best that I can in the next 35 minutes to answer those questions as they do come in. Um, so moving ahead uh, with this right here, um, you know, this is where I, I want to come in and I'm going to edit this cabinet. OK, and you can see that by default, the base cabinet itself has a height of 34 and a half inches and then it has an inch and a half counter on it. If we look at this, however, as we're looking at this here, OK, um, technically what's going to happen is this is going to drop down with no counter on it because the cooktop is going to sit on top of that right there. And so what I need to do is actually turn the counter off. And so using the miscellaneous and explode option, I can break the cabinets down into individual pieces and now edit this cabinet by itself. I'll remove the countertop from it so that it is now taken off or no longer included as part of the model. And then on the base cabinet, I'm going to change the height. And in this case, I'm just going to change it to, let's say, 28 inches. OK, now that's a bit of a guesswork on my part, but you can see how it lowered this cabinet over here in the 3D preview. So now coming back to draw and symbol, I go back to that same cooktop that I had there and I'm just going to click to start and click to finish. OK, to, to, to place it in there. And now I will simply, you know, I'm going to edit this and do uh, I as far as the cleanups concerned, it's sitting on the floor because it no longer finds a counter. This is, you know, being set down in. So in my case, I'll just simply either, you know, edit it for the um, 3D preview or in my case, I just simply moved it using the move tool to get it set into place. OK, and so now we have our drawers. We have our, our you know, lowered base cabinet here. We've got our counters on either side, um, you know, as I, uh, you know, slowly begin to pull this together. OK, now, as far as the design was concerned, you know, um, so there was a window here over a kitchen sink that was taken out when I did the uh, building options because it was a demo. This was rebricked in and two smaller um, windows were placed in there. And again, this is where drawing in the interior mode actually you know, works really well. And I'm going to introduce just clicking on zoom and center because really what I'm looking at is just to zoom in and work in this area only. I'm not really worried about the windows and doors and seeing them down here. I can come in through draw and opening and actually draw inside this mode as well. And so I'll just go to a generic window for right now and select casement and um, maybe pick an 18 by 48 window. OK, and you can actually, as you draw it, see the, the, the size of it. And so, you know, that's going to be obviously too large. And so in this case here now, um, I just find the, the size of window that I want to place in there. OK, I'll edit this window and I can even override the defaults if I want, um, you know, as far as where, you know, it's, it's default height being uh, because of the nine foot walls, lowering it down, which will help me, you know, pick out whether that's going to work or not. <laughs> and if necessary, even override the default and make it, you know, smaller things like interior trim, etc. Um, I'm going to actually turn that off. It was actually drywall wrap, so that's just a modification on there. Okay, and so once you have something like that in, you could then come in, move, and copy, and copy this, you know, to where you want it to be. And again, all I'm doing right now is space planning and figuring this out. There's going to be the option of dimensioning these exactly into place, you know, as you design, but a lot of times just this is how I design myself personally. It's it's visual, just what's going to look, whether this needs to move in, you know, half an inch to the right or left. Right now we're just working working on that. So once again, 
I could come in through cabinet and I'm going to select wall cabinet. OK, and from here I can select, you know, what the width of the wall cabinet is going to be. All right. So um, in this case, let's say 24 inches or 21 inches. All right. So once I have that, you know, that size, I can check what the you know height is going to be. So I've set this up now to 42 inches. OK. And again, I can change what, you know, um, all of those dimensions are going to be as far as, you know, that's concerned to get that. So that the top height matches everything else. OK. And then I'm also going to go in here. And right now I'm using a. Um, uh, face layout that's you know just flat okay so i want to come in here and change that and change it actually to glass grill and so once i've done something like this and clicked okay to set all of my options i can now click and place one of those in there and then using in this case the move copy command i'm just going to copy this over so that it is roughly centered over here and again those are things that in time we will place a dimension on right and so while i'm also here let's just select draw a symbol and uh, i'm going to pick this you know um, vented hood and i'll place it in place and you can see how easy it is to draw inside the elevation mode to um to, to, to see things you know uh, pulling out this is actually even easier honestly in my opinion than drawing inside the um you know, the, the floor plan or even the, uh, uh, you know, three dimensional model. Um, so, again, we can dimension those and see those in time, but this is just for actual space planning. So I'll come back into the floor plan at this stage and I can see where my, you know, all of my options are. And again, I could have pulled dimensions. I've done actually a pretty good job, I think, of getting things centered in place over over top of items for right now. So I'm going to run a, a, a save on that. And um, go to go to work on creating kind of the the custom island that's going to go in here. And so this will make use of a, a number of different um, you know cabinet styles and so on, just so that we can kind of you know get all through that. And then I'll go back and we'll begin editing some of the properties on the individual um, you know symbols themselves. And so coming in through the uh, draw cabinet, okay. Um, and in fact, I might even use some of the draw select because I know this would be let's say directly across from here. So we're going to get a 24 inch cabinet that's going to be used there. And then I'm, you know, even a, a um, secondary one, something like so for where the, the sink is going to be placed. It's probably going to be, you know, something that's more in line with a 36 inch wide cabinet, uh, probably going to have a uh, drawer symbol, you know, sitting above and we'll recess that so that it looks the same as what the other symbols are going to look like. And so again, I'll just click to insert it in place. We're going to place a dishwasher over here. And so using the draw select, which is just uh, hitting the letter S on your keyboard, I place that in there. Now there are other things, um, for example, maybe we want to represent just using a small flat door symbol, um, a, a, you know, kind of a um, pull out for spices and, and so on, right? And so here I could come in and using the base option, I'm going to override and select a nine inch and I don't actually want a drawer on there. So we'll set the, the drawer count to zero. So we've got just simply a single, you know, door, you know, pull out. And then I'll just simply click to start and click to finish. And so as I just quickly take a look at this, all right, I'm not even set down where I want the, you know, the actual dimension from here to here at yet. I'm just kind of setting out what I'm thinking is going to look like. We've got a couple of, you know, uh, three drawers. Eventually this one will become where a dishwasher is placed. The sink will be placed here and so on, right? And so um, I'll, I'll zoom this down and uh, um, probably try and pull it out just a little bit so that you can see it. So in this case here, eventually I'm going to let me get this dimension into place. So we would just simply use dimension. And you, when you select the command, make sure your symbol dimensions on so that you can actually dimension between the two symbols. And so depending on what you want, as far as, you know, um, that, that dimension being there, I'd say three foot six is the minimum. And if you can do, you know, uh, you know, something more, then you might take a look at something like that. Right. So we're just kind of, you know, setting that out. 
Um, let's do three foot six as, as at least our minimum, so we've got plenty of space there. Okay, so now um, you see I do a lot of this where I kind of break this down into individual pieces, and that's kind of just a drawing technique. I use a lot of Control E or Explode. It allows me to see all of the individual symbols by name and so on. And so once they are there, I can then come in and I can actually edit symbols and set them up, you know, to exactly where I want their, uh, you know, what's going in there. And so I could edit this uh, symbol right here, and I want to introduce um, three three different items that you're going to use, tap, sync, and replace cabinet. The tap and sync is exactly what it's, is go, it sounds like. It's going to place a, a sink and a, a faucet or tap into the uh, the cabinet. And the replace cabinet does just that. It removes the cabinet altogether. And so now I could go down to my, my list of manufacturers. I'm just going to stick with the General Electric, I'm, I'm guessing. And um, I can select from the list of symbols that are here a, a dishwasher symbol. Okay, And so I would just simply scroll, look for what you know my dishwasher symbol that, that I'm going to use okay and uh, if you're ever having trouble you know you can begin to just type in you know what you what you're looking for and so I find the manufacturer General Electric dishwasher number one I'll pick the number two I just like the style a little bit better and so as I open that up it replaced the symbol with the, the, the dishwasher itself. And so again, I could now edit this symbol here and I could say, let's add a sink to it. Now you've got all kinds of sinks that are in here and you can also you know, go in and as I said, you could do a, a search. So as it begins to um, drill down, you, uh, the first bunch are going to be all you know generic from the kitchen but then as you begin to drill down even further you'll begin to find you know all of your manufacturers you know and listings and so on you can just see I am scrolling and scrolling there are literally hundreds of these symbols that are available to you and so you can just kind of go all the way down until you find you know the library that you're looking for or even the specific sync symbol that you're looking for so in my case once I get here uh, now I can scroll through the the three dimensional you know preview of what these symbols are going to look like you know find the symbol that I'm looking for and select OK and it will be placed inside there and so once again I'll do the same thing um, you know I'm gonna you know look for a faucet right and so it's just going to scroll down until you know and I, I begin to you know search for what it is I'm looking for until I find the individual faucet that I'm looking for um, you know or as opposed to going to a specific library itself and so this is just you know entirely up to you know just kind of what it is you want to to you know use as far as your, your symbols are concerned um, you know and so it's again just a matter of uh, you know I'm going to scroll this time to let's find uh, my manufacturers. I'm going to go to uh, Kohler. I'm going to go to um, faucets here and I will find this one here and click to insert it. OK. And so once I've done that, it, you know, it places it on there. And so this, you know, with that edit, I've set the sink, the faucet and the dishwasher into place. Now, um, I'm going to customize a little bit on the back side of this because there really wasn't enough room on the actual design. Ultimately, what winds up happening is um, if I come in through Draw Select and I pick this, this bank of cabinets would basically run across here. And in fact, I think they were actually a little bit wider, if I recall. Uh, yeah, I put 34 in there. These become 36 stepped in just so so I'm just going to move it in a little bit okay and then using draw select we'll add you know the bank and then this opening right here basically became a little bit wider to open up you know the uh, the to the what was going to become like a front seating area and so as we begin to look at the design all right there's the openings OK, and here is, you know, kind of that bank of cabinets. And so what that dictates to us at this stage then is, you know, we can't you know put a full bank of cabinets back here and have a comfortable space as far as for, for, for walking about on there. And so I'll just come in through uh, draw select. I'm going to pick this 24 inch, 
you know, cabinet. I'm going to click to edit and then I'm going to edit it and I'm going to change its depth. And it's actually just going down to six inches. It really is just a placeholder that's going to be put on there. OK. And in fact, uh, it's not going to have any kind of hardware. Um, it's, you know, as far as the face is concerned, it's actually just going to be a, um, you know, single door, you know, look on there, but it's actually not operational. And so um, the door will say at one, the door will say it, sit at zero and I'll click OK. And so now I can just, you know, and reasonably speaking, as far as time is concerned, I, I probably won't be able to get to all of this. But, um, you know, we would just we just basically took this and, and split it up into, you know, three equals, you know, spaces. So I'm just going to, you know, um, draw another one here and I will adjust it so that it fits there. Um, I'm going to draw another one here and. Let's just do this. And in fact, I'll place that there if I may. And then I will adjust this all the way to there. Just to just to, I'm just kind of stretching this out. And then these are all just going to go down to um, as far as the individual cabinets are concerned. Uh, we will you know set them to just twelve or, or the the depth of I think it was six inches. And so I'm just basically creating right now across the back. And, and I could have, you know, just because we just added a little bit of depth to beef that up, uh, you know, so to speak. Now, what you will see right now is the um, and, and, and this is kind of what the next thing that I want to go to. Um, so I'm just going to move my. OK, so we're looking at something like this and basically there's a bookcase placed on the end. The countertop actually get chamfered in the corner. So there's some customization that needed to take place with creating this island right here. And so if I come in and I just select, let's say, the, um, uh, you know, draw cabinet for, for just a second, I'm going to select the base. And um, so this was 24 and then another six. So it's going to be 30 inches as far as that's concerned. And I actually kind of, you know, as far as this goes, um, something like that, zero and zero. So we're really just kind of going with an open end feel right now, 30 inches in width. Let's take a look at what that looks like. And then the depth on this, you can see that the drawing preview allows me to, to really kind of, you know, dig in and, and just see you know what this is going to look like and so now if I zoom this up and we're just going to you know uh, set it in place and to, to get everything aligned I'm going to edit this right here and I'm just going to click on shelving and we're just going to come in here and modify the number of shelves on this so that when we take a look at it we've actually got the shelving unit on the end like so OK, now I'm going to edit this and I'm going to, you know, remove the countertop off of this, because if I do, it's actually going to allow me to um, go in now and, you know, modify a um, custom counter over the top of this this symbol right here. OK, and so what I want to do is once I've removed that or taken it off of there and I'll do a save, I can come in through cabinet. And at this stage now, I could select countertop. Now, the accuracy is going to matter here. So depending on what I want to do as far as the overhang is concerned, I'm kind of drawing it in by eye once again right now. But this will allow me to, uh, you know, sketch wherever I wanted to go with said counter. OK, I can edit this counter and I can change, you know, the, the line style to match like what I've done on the other the defaults there. You could even change the material on this to be something different than what's being used elsewhere. OK, and the key here is uh, um, I'm going to, you know, offset this up and, you know, remove it from cleanup for right now. But I'm, the big reason I did this was when we were basically, you know, working this out um, and this is just real world. We're just having a discussion. This felt too closed in. And also for getting, you know, furniture down and around the corner, this is corner just was, was setting up for just too tight. So using the tools in chamfer, we laid out just, you know, like a, a template literally. 
And here, now you, what you can see is I, I came in and just chamfering that corner right there was just enough to open this up and, you know, um, allowed that without the, the costly construction and now demoing into a laundry room and taking the corner off. And so doing that, you know, I, you know, the benefits of putting the counter on, you know, is I can use the tools like so. Now, I could have curved that corner using the curved fillet, et cetera. I happen to use the chamfer. So finally now, um, coming in and using the um, you know, post command, I can now just select you know, what type of post that we want to put in there you know, um, that's going to be used underneath you know, uh, you know, for the actual kitchen uh, cabinet so to support it. I'm, I've got to pick something. So I've just picked one thing, and then I'm going to edit this cabinet or this post, and I'm just going to change its width. And so I'll change it to 5 inches by 5 inches. And we'll change its height to 34 and a half inches to push it underneath. And we'll click OK. And we'll just take a look. And so there is the, the post. And so at this stage now, depending, you know, if that's exactly where it was going to go, I could then come in and just copy this all the way down to here, like so. And so... So we are, give or take, 45 minutes into this at this stage. We're, we're, you know, I mean, we're showing plenty. Obviously, we're not going to get a completely finished cabinet or, or kitchen, but we're, we're making some pretty good headway, okay? So let's talk about some of the finishes and some of the, um, uh, you know, options that you can do uh, initially, you know, as far as this goes. Um, so if I edit this uh, cabinet here in the back, Number one thing that we can change is we can go in and, you know, modify things like what the finish is going to be painted versus, you know, a different, you know, uh, finish altogether. In this case, you know, maple dark, et cetera. So we went with kind of a painted option. We can also come in here through accessories, and this is where you can change what your hardware is going to be, okay? Uh, I'm using basically generic soft plan at this stage, so I haven't customized it or, or, or anything along that lines. But so, um, you know, in, in this case here, you can just simply pick what your, you know, handles are going to look like, and it's going to assign those, you know, to it. And on the drawers, you'd have the option of having different drawer symbols, you know, from, um, you know, what you're doing, you know, on the uh, on the actual cabinets themselves, and you can see it's it's been placed in there, okay? You'll also be able to come in here now and add things like crown molding, and so once you select the crown molding, you can pick from the profile, and it's going to add that to the, um, to the counter. And then, um, you know, the last thing, uh, as far as the cabinet run is concerned, this is a flat panel down here, so if you want to add to the uh, to the panel on the right hand side and you can even change what the shape is going to look like so that it you know has that uh, a more clean finish so to speak on there and so now you can just repeat edit those changes to the other cabinets you know um, on the fly and so all I'm doing is doing a right click and repeat edit okay to these cabinets as I go all right. Now, I would have to define a custom front face, which I don't have time for today. In order to have these this hardware, I can actually pick on the face where I want the hardware to be assigned. Um, I'm just going to leave that for right now, and I'm just going to continue to repeat edit these changes through here so that we can, you know, um, for all intents and purposes, you know, get this completely white you know, as far as that is concerned. And so you can see the end panels being added to the uh, to the symbols. Um, this is where it, something might be faster inside the, um, you know, uh, 2D versus 3D because uh, I could have just done a, a large expanding box and changed all of the symbols, you know, uh, you know quickly. All right, so that gets our – now we've got the kitchen basically as far as the, the, the bones of, of it, the shape is all there. A few other custom things that I want to show you, and again, I'm, I'm doing a lot of this drawing I'm doing inside shaded mode. Why? Because it draws the fastest. But there was going to be, um, if you recall, a, a brick wall back here with, with shelving and so on that, that, that was going in. So this is where you can come in through draw and uh, rod and shelf. And so here I'm just going to, you know, click the start and I'm going to run it all the way across. And when I do that and then right click, it literally just places a rod and shelf like you, what you would do in a um, standard, you know, closet. And so once I do an edit on this, I can then come in and I can, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the rod, right? I don't need the rod in there. And I'm going to change the, the number of shelving to <laughs> what I want to see on there. And then what I can do is actually change what the offset's going to be. So we might do 48 inches and then we're going to, uh, change the individual shelving to, let's say, 12-inch spacing. 
Okay. And so as I do that, it's, it's showing what this looks like. And these were actually custom built shelves. And so we could come in and change them to be much thicker and robust. Um, than, than what the default is, and so you get your shelving on there, okay? So that, again, I'll be able to come in at some point and change what that's going to look like. Um, <clears throat> so that's our that's our shelving. If I need this a little bit higher, I could just come in and change what the offset's going to be, and let's change this to, say, 4 feet 8, and it pushes the shelves up, all right? So that's... Um, Let's talk a little bit about lighting, um, and, and then once we get the lighting done, we're going to go in and add some finishes to this to kind of wrap it up in the final 10 minutes or so. And so what I want to do now is um, I'm, I'm actually going to go back into the options and material, and I'm going to turn that ceiling back on and, because this is going to begin to play into uh, you know what we've got. And I'm actually going to change this to textured mode so that we um, you know have that that on there. And so let's just uh, did I actually, maybe perhaps I removed the ceiling out of here. So what I will do is I'm going to change into uh, ceiling mode. Yep, I did. So I'm going to come in here through draw, and I'm just going to select that I want a, a ceiling only at this stage and just auto trace that in, okay? And so when I take a look at this in 3D, I now have the ceiling on there, okay? And you can see the concrete floor on the bottom. All right, so let's add some lighting into this, um, you know, relatively quickly. And so I will change into electrical mode. And um, a couple of things, there was going to be can lights throughout this. And, of course, we had overhead beams that we, we put in to kind of break up the ceiling and so on. But for now, what I'll do is I'll come in through electrical symbols, and I'm just going to do a selection for can lights. And I'll pick the can light that I want to use. And at this stage now, I'm just going to position my cursor where the first can light is to be placed, and I will click start and then click to finish. And I will copy this down. And um, a little bit of this is now just kind of doing this, you know, by eye. Um, and so I will, you know, place uh, three of them across there. And so now I'm just going to be using the copy block. I'm going to copy these. And again, you know, I'm using, um, you know, every five foot four, we're going to place a few. And so I'll do, you know, some dimensioning across there. Now, I do know that over the, the island, it, we decided we were going to put pendant lights in there. And so keeping the, the spacing the same, I can edit this. And now what I could do is select, <laughs> excuse me, from the list of libraries that I want to go down and just simply select, you know, from one of the manufacturers, you know, the, you know, different types of pendant lights that are available. And so I've just done an edit of this can light, and then I will do a repeat edit of this, okay, and, um, you know, have it also placed in there, you know, uh, so it's placed in there. Now, ultimately, um, and I did this by eye, these were aligned with the windows, and so, you know, that's, neither here nor there for today's class, but you can begin to see, you know, I've got the can lighting in there. I've now, you know, got the um, pendant lights over top of the island, okay, for, for, for visual and for lighting of the model. Okay, once that is done now, I can come in and actually begin to modify or change, you know, items, you know, about the how the plan is done. So if I change into, let's say, room mode, and what room mode will allow me to do is come in and place rooms, which includes all of their uh, items such as baseboard trims, flooring, you know, materials, uh, wall paint colors, um, etc. So it allows you to do all of that with one click. If I click room and I were to select, let's say, living room for just a second here, um, and, and I clicked inside this front room right here, um, and it's asking, it says there's already a ceiling in there, which I just added, so I'm not going to add over top. When I do an auto trace, if I come back into 3D and I select camera, go to room, and I pick living room, okay, you will see at this stage right now it's got my – it just painted my walls. It added hardwood floors. It, it placed baseboard trim on there, et cetera, Okay. But it does expand that to the entire room. So that basically filled the entire room in here with all of that. <laughs> because this is an open concept, it'll work as long as I want to have the same material. So if I come in here through a room, and let's just say I do a quick search for kitchen, okay? Um, and so when I do a, a search for kitchen and I select auto trace and I click, this entire area is all considered kitchen because it's open concept. So when I pick go to room and I pick kitchen, 
Okay, I now have tile running from family room all the way across into the kitchen itself. This allows me, however, to go in and edit that. So if I change from um, while I'm in inside the, uh, the the room mode, which is where I'm doing this, I come into room properties. I can come in and I can change things like you know what the uh, the flooring is going to be. So in this case, on the kitchen, let's change that to hardwood number one. And so when I do that and I come back into the 3D, I can see where the hardwood's going to be. And of course, I would have carried this through the, the, to the front hall, but we're more concerned with, you know, what this looks like here. All right, same thing. The entire room has been painted the same color. Now, because I want to have different textures and different colors, you know, throughout the, the, the plan, I'm going to break this down on an individual basis by changing to interior mode. When you go to interior mode, it actually breaks down the room into individual polygons. And so in this case here, wall paint number five, I'm going to actually erase that so that it no longer paints the room. By, by, going, by doing it through interior mode, I can now come in and control that I want to paint, let's say, these walls here. And you can see where I'm tracing my polygon. But when I get to this back wall over here, I want to put a different material on there. And so in this case here, I'll just pick stone tile for right now. I'm going to click to start and click to finish and then right click. And so what we now will have is we will have a different material here than we have over here. OK, and so if I do a surface edit on this and let's just say I were to come into display texture and I come to um, exterior finish and I were to pick brick and wall and then from this let's just say I pick that texture okay it's assigning a different texture there than it is over here and I can even go so far so I'm putting more of a reclaimed brick on there that you as you can see then I could do a surface edit over here and under the texture color I can select the manufacturer that I want to use so Sherwin Williams for example I could scroll down into the colors that I want to use and you can now see I add more of a gray texture you know, to the wall. And the same thing, I'm going to do a surface edit here. And this is where <laughs> the manufacturers really come into play because they're happy to provide you with the bitmaps and JPEGs. And SoftPlan um, will provide a lot of these for you. So you really want to take the opportunity to go in and take a look at what is available to you there because you will see that we've got all kinds of, of different, you know, symbols that are already for use that you could assign to your, your actual model, okay? And so I'm just going through and selecting the texture. Now, once I select the wood texture that I want to use for the flooring, the boards are running the wrong way, so I could just simply rotate these and have them run in the opposite direction. Okay, so you can see how quickly we're getting this up to speed on the plan. So the same thing, I could, I'm going to edit this granite, and I'm just going to go to the texture preview, OK, and from here, I could then go down and begin to modify, you know, or select from the, the materials that are there, you know, something that um, that better aligns with what the you know, what they were looking at, you know, from their from the showroom or whenever they went to what they went to look at. And this was actually very similar or very close to it. And this is this all of this ships with Softland. So I'm not showing you something that you don't you know already have. OK, so there is our kitchen, um, you know, is, uh, you know, you know, counters and cabinets and so on are, are all in place, okay? And so, you know, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of come across here and just show you how you could use, you know, um, you could edit the individual, you know, cabinets themselves. And on the countertop, you could actually, you know, add a, um, add a you know, as far as a, a splash is concerned, okay, on the back. And then you can actually modify what that splash height is going to be. I'm taking a rough guess on this. And I could say 18 inches, okay. And so I'll come over here to 3D texture. And I'm going to repeat edit that there. And then on the back side right here, I could go in and modify and add through the room mode. Or I'm... Just for the sake of the class today, I'm going to use a simple thing, and, and I will warn you, what I'm showing you is just I'm using a solid, 
because um, it is one other item I will use in 3D sometimes for creating an image. But be aware that if you use a solid for anything, it does not necessarily um, count as far as your 3D is concerned. So it's simply a visual item only. And so I use a solid cube right here. OK, and I could come in here now and I could modify what that height is going to be. And so let's just say, you know, 60 inches for, for just right now so you can see it. And now I could come in and using adjust. I could adjust this up to the underside. Again, I could have used um, an interior to do this, but the reason I'm doing this is I just want to create like a um, uh, kind of a, a stainless steel backsplash on here. So then using edit, surface, copy, paste, I will paste that there in behind. So this gets us to here. Let's take a look at this at a, as, as more of a high end, you know, image turning on things like, you know, um, textures and, and so on. OK, so back in the main floor plan for one second, there's an electrical uh, fixture that is out of place because it was placed centered based on the room mode. So I'll place it over in the eating area where it's supposed to be. And inside 3D, we are going to set up our image, OK, as being right here. And I'm trying to get it as close to what, you know, the other one looked like. And so inside mode, um, or sorry, options and mode options, I can turn up the anti-aliasing, which is going to, you know, help sharpen the, the image for me. OK, inside lighting, I'm going to begin to turn the custom lighting on. OK, and here I can begin to you can see how bright this has actually gotten at this stage. And that's because of the lighting, all of this lighting that's in here. And so I'm going to edit this can light right here. OK, that we've got and I'm going to turn its brightness down because right now it's sitting in around a, you know, that 10. So if I change that to a four and then using edit, repeat edit box, I can get you know, all of these lights and just kind of turn them down a little bit. And so back inside the 3D, we begin to to lower the the, uh, you know, how much sheen and, and so on um, inside the the mode options. I can go to um, things like uh, face options and enable reflections. And so as I do that, you're going to begin to see things like the counters and the flooring begin to show reflections on there. OK, and so um, this is just at this stage now beginning to tweak or play with what the model, uh, you know, is going to look like as far as to to your eye. And so it's just kind of going through right now. And you can see just by turning on the reflections um, how we're slowing down the, the, the process. But it just finished. So you can now see reflections inside the refrigerator. I probably still need to turn down a little bit of the brightness, you know, in here uh, and enhance. But. In an hour, we managed to get this image, you know, up um, to this point. You know, that's that's pretty quick. We didn't do we didn't modify things like the nosing on, on the countertop. That is something that was just being edit. OK, um, you know, we didn't put the overhead beams in there, but those are literally just false beams that are being placed. And certainly with a little bit of time, as I say, you know, put into this, um, you know, which is really just tweaking of lights. This is what the final image would look like. OK, and if you compare it, relatively speaking, to this image, which is an actual photograph of the finished product. I think if you presented something like this and this is what the, the homeowner ended up with, um, they'd be pretty happy as far as the design is concerned. Um, guys, it is that has been an hour already. Um, I know it went by pretty quick for me. Uh, and I know I threw a lot of information at you as far as the, um, the you know, the, the design is concerned. Um, this has been recorded. And so uh, early next week, we will get this uh, posted to the web page. So if you want to go back and review it, uh, you'll be able to. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's Friday Fundamental. Uh, next Friday, we will be offering another one hour session on custom bathrooms. And um, so hopefully you can join us for that. Um, and with that said, have a great rest of the day.